wanted to do a little comparison between my GoPro Hero 5 and what I'm shooting with my GX7 Mark II by Canon. And this is my Canon G7X Mark II. Now I'm shooting with my Canon. This is the G7X Mark II. And I have it set up with a very neutral color profile. You had the ability to do that. I have the image stabilizer on. I have it set to 60 frames per second. Set to shutter speed of 125 and I'm shooting in shutter priority. And I feel you can do that I, because I have enough, it's good light and I'm not worried about my ISO too much so I have it because I'm just you know, shooting on the go, I leave my ISO on auto. That way I get good exposure, I have a shutter speed that I want to use that's applicable to the uh, frame rate that I'm using, I'm choosing. And here's my little GoPro setup. You can see the wind muffler that I talked about. Actually, it comes solid on the back, but I went ahead and I cut that window out so I could see what I was shooting. Now, there is a difference in price between these two cameras. The, uh, the GoPro is significantly less expensive, and you can pick up the... They came out with the 6. This is the 5. You, you can pick them up a lot less expensively than you can the Canon. G7X. However, all around, I would, if I had to choose one camera, it would be the Canon G7X. This is with the GoPro. In the preferences, you can set up the ProTune color, and I took the image to flat because I have the ability to post-process in Final Cut Pro and I thought that's going to give me the best most neutral image to work with. I'm shooting with the the detail or sharpness they call it completely off or as low as to low I believe the low is the setting because that's something else I can introduce the amount of detail I want back when I'm on my computer. So I don't know how this is, but we'll find out. We'll compare this to how this camera looks, my little Canon G7X Mark II. You can see I have a wind buffer on the top of this one, and it's made out of the exact same material that the GoPro wind buffer is made of. I took an old one and I cut it up. And I just used craft glue and I'm really impressed with how well that works. It's not directional in any way, and it does a good job of muffling out the wind. This is once again with my GoPro. I'm shooting in a backlit situation toward the sun, and we can kind of see how that works. This is my Canon shooting in that same situation. It's backlit and I just have it running on the shutter priority. Uh, my face is probably dark. I would imagine both cameras did this fairly similarly. This is my Canon G7X Mark II. I'm just walking along. I have the stabilizer on. I have it in shutter priority. Shooting at 1 125th of a second. I have my ISO to auto. I have my white balance on daylight and I'm shooting at 60 frames per second. This is good because if you want that way I can suddenly do some slow motion. Like that. 
let's just walk along here. I've had issues sometimes where the focus doesn't want to grab with this camera. It has face detection, but I have a, a very, my face is such that it doesn't want to register. I think I could be probably a good criminal because my face is, uh, is one that can't be recognized. I'm putting my gloves on here. Canon's auto focus system is very, very good though. This is a good thing. Now, in contrast, my GoPro, it does not have a focusing system. The sensor size is so small, what you have is you ha because you have a small sensor size, you have an infinite range of focus. It's like your phone. You don't need to worry about focusing. It just, it's always in focus, like a pinhole camera. It's a good thing, but then again, the smaller sensor size has limitations. There's my Canon. Get a good look at that. The controls on the back. And you can see that the GoPro does not struggle at all with focus. It's just automatically there. Hi. And you can see how I stuck the foam on the top. It's not real fancy looking. It's soft. You can press down on it and it'll compress. Hi. Walk with the GoPro. You can see that it is a very, very wide angle of view, more so than my Canon. But let's see how the slow motion looks. I'd spin around kind of like that. Hi. Setting up cameras is very confusing to everybody except the person working in the camera shop and the people you see out on YouTube that are telling you about the wondrous things the cameras do because in the real world when you get out there you want to pick it up and just go very frustrating and I know a lot about cameras unfortunately most of my knowledge about cameras dates from film cameras but I know a lot about cameras and I still the electronics part of it, all the buttons, becomes overwhelming sometimes. So don't let that bother you. Like on this GoPro, what they call the vocabulary they use for certain things is different than Canon uses. One of the things that I disliked the most about my Sony experience when I had the A6500 was their menu system and the vocabulary they used. I was constantly trying to tweak it for the better. The Canon is a better camera. There's no doubt about that. I have the image stabilizer on. I can set more, I have more choices with my color. I like to shoot with my white balance set to daylight with most of these cameras because I can Always, uh, if I'm indoors, I can change it. If I'm shooting indoors, but I shoot indoors so rarely that I thought it might be best to do this. And I could set my aperture. I, I suppose I could be shooting in manual, predetermine my shutter speed and my aperture, and then it would fluctuate my ISO to keep the exposure good. But when you're shooting in this style where you are are just out and you want to pick a camera up and be moving around about with it like this you don't want it to be going out of exposure it's hard enough to make sure the focus stays good and I don't know if it's been tracking me really good or not 
The one downside, of course, is it has a fixed lens. It zooms well and everything, but I mean, it's not interchangeable. So you can't put on different lenses. And it does not have the ability to take an external microphone. Neither of these cameras do. So, and this is about comparing these two. And I'm looking at pocket-sized cameras. The GoPro, obviously, is super small. You can just throw it in a bag and your pocket real easily. But this Canon is a very small camera. But it's a beautiful day. Light sunshine, not too harsh. And my arm's getting tired. Pretty good breeze. So if you can hear wind noise through the little foam muffler on there, it would be, now would be the time. There's this rule in video to set your shutter speed to twice your frame rate. And uh, I would like to have have set that to if I'm shooting at 60 frames per second, which I'm doing right now, I would like to set that up to 120, 125, excuse me. I was juggling cameras there. You should know that if you do pick up one of these cameras, they're really nice little cameras. You can use it as a regular camera and you can do time lapse with them. I've done quite a few time lapses with this little camera, but I wouldn't call myself a professional by any means and I would not I would not say that I am even a really advanced user with the GoPro because I haven't used it much so this is the GoPro it's a good option you can get into one of these for you know, they have the Hero 6 out now this is the Hero 5 you know they're waterproof all that stuff I have their Karma grip, which is their stabilizer that you can mount it in. But in order to use that stabilizer, you give up all hope of having any kind of audio because it's just non existent. The biggest fault of GoPro has been their audio qualities. You'll notice all the all the really cool footage you see with the GoPro does not really have audio of people talking very often. So you can kind of compare this, and then I'm going to get out my Canon GX7, G7X Mark II, and you can compare that. I wish I had my old Sony A6500 that I could also compare against them, but got rid of it, got tired of it. This is my GoPro again. And what I did, the difference here, is I turned the Pro Tune off, and that takes away options. But this is kind of like the default mode. So if you didn't know about Pro Tune or or knew what to do with the settings in Pro Tune, this is what you would be shooting with. I'll examine it. I kept the stabilization on, of course, and I have it shooting at 60 frames per second. There's a lot of talk about how. If you shoot at 24 frames per second, it's really cinematic. It's like movie. But I think that on the other side of that, if I'm out shooting, I don't know when I'll want to suddenly throw in a slow motion little bit like this. I'll go, ooh. I'll see something like, I don't know what those were, little mushrooms or something? Uh, and I can turn to slow motion. I'll see something like, I don't know what those were, little mushrooms or something? And I can turn to slow motion and I'll be able to achieve it. Whereas if I had it set to 24 frames per second, I couldn't do that. You'd have to stop, reset it to a higher frame rate, and then start shooting. So that's a consideration. I'm all for simplifying this because it's hard enough to get the content right, much less to make the technology all come together for you. I think I'm gonna make 60 frames per second probably my standard. The strength of the GoPro is it's an action camera. 
if you're out shooting action like this all the time, maybe it's worth sacrificing some of the other advantages a little bit larger camera gives you in order to get that carefree action just shoot it and go. Because you can strap this thing. I used it for my helmet cam views. I've used it a lot, but I never considered it to be a really good first camera. Maybe that needs to be rethought in this day and age. You know, this camera is small, but you know, you, you, it brings in more variables. It's been fun. Thanks for watching. I'm just going to try to keep learning as much as I can about these cameras because it's the key to, to doing better. So until next time, unless I have something earth shattering about these cameras to tell you, I'm going to be sticking with my G7X that I have right there. I'm using and I'll use my GoPro for those, those times I really think it'll be better.